I tried to conquer the Galar region with the smallest Pokemon currently in existence. So if we can defeat Leon, our tiny Pokemon will have a massive victory. So we started off with Grookey, but unfortunately he's way too tall for this run. So we really started off by catching a Rookity, and we lost to the first trainer, and even a wild Squovet. Rookity isn't great considering that it's a first form early route bird, but Power Trip mixed with Home Claws is a great combination, especially in early parts of the game, and this is going to immensely help with that first BD fight. Once we get access to the wild area, we get a ton of encounters that we can use. In the wild area itself, we can catch ourselves a Budu and a Natsu. Hey, that rhymes, and I transfer in a Meltan from Pokemon Go. But it was pretty solid, and we know that it could be pretty good because of how it performed in our baby only run. Check that out in the icon above after this video. Natu is pretty good as well, thanks to its base 70 special attack and speed, so I think he'll be useful at points. Meltan is pretty okay with decent attack and defense, but the sad thing is a majority of its best moves are special moves. But a steel type is always nice to have on the team. On the Isle of Armor, we can catch ourselves a Fungus, Klefki, Comfey, and a Zurl. Yeah, expect a ton of fairy types in this run. Fungus can be a good Pokemon to use over Budu since it has a wider variety of learnable moves, and Spore is always a big plus, but that speed is incredibly concerning. Klefki and Comfey are both excellent support Pokemon, and I'm really excited to use them. Klefki's Steel and Fairy typing gives it a ton of resistances and immunities, and its Prankster ability can give us priority on great moves like Charm, Reflect, and Light Screen, whereas Comfey's Triage ability gives us priority on all kinds of healing moves, so I'm really excited to try giving these two a shot. And Azuril can be okay, it does get some water type moves, and it's got an attack boosting nature with huge power, but it doesn't get stabbed from those water moves since it's a normal fairy type in this game, instead of the water fairy type that I desire. On Route 4, we catch ourselves a Joltik, Milsery, and Cutie Fork. Joltik's electric typing will give us some good coverage along with its bug typing, and its really high speed is going to be resourceful too, so I can think of a few situations where we could probably use him very effectively. Milsery is another fairy type that we can use, but I think it's only real appeal is that it's got okay special defense. With Pokemon like Klefki and Comfey, I didn't really see much use for it. Cutie Fly, again, another fairy type, is one that I'm actually really excited to use though. I've always wanted to use a Rabombi, and this is an excellent opportunity to be able to do so. It's got some pretty good special attack and speed, but we sadly got one with Honey Gather instead of Shield Dust. Since Milo only has two Pokemon, the rules state that we can go into the gym with only two Pokemon. But since we have two Steel types in our party that resist both types of moves that Milo Milo's Pokemon have, I'm not that concerned at all. From doing raids in the wild area, I was able to find myself a TR for Dazzling Gleam, and I put it on Klefki, and that, mixed with learning Metal Sound prior to the gym, meant that we could easily lower his team's special defense to minus six and sweep. Our next encounter is just east of Turfield, and let me tell you, I am excited to use this thing for some reason. Applin's not a great Pokemon, seeing that it can only learn two moves, Withdraw and Astonish, but that doesn't mean it can't learn anything else. By heading over to the Isle of Armor and getting Clara's dojo outfit back, we unlock the ability to teach new moves exclusive to the wild area to our team in exchange for Armorite Ore. And thankfully, Applin can learn the new grass move, Grassy Glide. It's pretty strong for this point in the game, and if we ever are in grassy terrain, it gets extra priority. There's not a lot of opportunities for us to use that side effect, but it's good to have thanks to the synergy it now gets with Comfey. The only downside to getting this move is that we're also given the experience charm, so now we get even more experience from battles. I really hope that this doesn't come back to bite me. Now that we have a stab move on Applin, I swept Nessa with it. No, I'm not kidding. I brought other Pokemon in case things went awry, but all I had to do was spam withdraw till we got comfortable to live every hit Dreadnought could throw at us. I also gave him a Citrus Berry, so that when it got to half health, it could roughly get back to full thanks to its Ripen ability. After setting up completely, Goldeen, Arakuta, and Dreadnought all went down to Grassy Glides. Before returning to Motostoke, I decided to transfer in a Mimikyu. Now, I know what you're thinking. Mimikyu's findable in the wild area. Why would you need to transfer one in? Well, let me rant about something real quick. Mimikyu is findable in two parts of the wild area, but only one of them is at a level that we can use it at currently. But the problem with this is that Mimikyu is a random encounter in the grass with a very low percentage of appearing. But to make things even more hectic, it can only appear in foggy weather, which to my knowledge is incredibly rare to get in the wild area, and you can't activate it until you get eight gym badges. So by the time that happens, doesn't every Pokemon in the wild area change to level 60 anyway? 
anyway? Even then, we can try to find it in raid dens, but it's typically a level 4 or 5. So, again, we need to wait till the latter half of the game in order to use it. It is findable in the Crown Tundra as well, but everything there starts off in the 60s, so we wouldn't even be able to use it until the end game. Anyway, Mimikyu is an incredible Pokemon thanks to its Ghost Fairy type. It's got some great immunities, as well as some great moves up its arsenal, even if the really good ones are later down the line. And of course, even though nerfed, its disguise ability is fantastic. And I know what you're thinking. Yes, it's another fairy type. So strangely enough, I was worried about Kabu. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but we have absolutely nothing for fire types. Our best bet, and I use that term incredibly loosely, is Azuril, but it's not a water type. So I doubt Waterfall will do too much damage, even with the attack boosting nature and huge power. Our only other water type that we can use in this run is Wishy Washy, but it's only smaller than a foot in its solo form. Once it hits level 20, that's when its schooling ability activates, and then it becomes bigger than a foot. So unfortunately, we can't use it. What actually helped us with Kabu was Kumfei. We were luckily able to get Leech Seed just before the gym, and that that gives us our chance to claiming victory. Leech Seed saps one eighth of the target's HP each turn, so if we do some relatively cheap tactics <laughs> and protect to get the most out of Leech Seed, we can emerge victorious. We took down Ninetales with Natu thanks to Confuse Ray and Nightshade, but we decided to stay in to see if we could possibly set up a Reflect. Sadly, we don't because Arcanine takes us out. We do send in Kumfei and get up a Leech Seed as he goes for agility and tries to burn us, but thanks to Draining Kiss and Protect, we take down Arcanine in due time. As Scorch comes out in Gigantic maxes, we set up another Leech Seed and it hits us with a max Flutterby, which surprisingly didn't do as much as I thought, but we did the same thing with Arcanine and stalled it out with Protect and Leech Seed. Upon arriving in Stoneside, we have a rival battle with Hop, but he was pretty easy here. After taking out his Cramorant, Silicobra, Toxel, and Drizzile, I make my way to the Glimwood Tangle, since there's a small patch of grass that we can access before taking on the Fighting Gym. Here we can catch ourselves a Sinisty, who will eventually be able to evolve into a Poltegeist. I'm actually really excited to use this guy. It has some great special attack and speed, and will eventually get access to Shell Smash, one of the best setup moves in the game. B, as you can imagine, was actually pretty easy, seeing as we had, what, like, seven fairy types at our disposal currently? Yeah, she didn't stand a chance. Hitmontop, Pangoro, Surfetched, and Gigantamax Machamp all went down incredibly easy. Before heading to Balanlea, I made sure to go pick up the Cracked Pot in Stoanside so that we could evolve Sinisty into Poltegeist. I never knew that this was actually findable. I always thought that you had to buy it from the merchant. I also managed to snag a TM for Cosmic Power for Natu, which can do absolute wonders for us damage-wise if I had actually remembered to relearn Stored Power. After picking up the Evulite, I fought Opal, and she was pretty easy too. Natu was able to take down Weezing thanks to Nightshade, Meltan took care of Mawile and Togekiss thanks to Thunderbolt, and then Gigantamax Alchemy went down thanks to Klefki. This was pretty easy, but Klefki was getting dangerously close to passing the level cap before this. Gordy wasn't too bad as you can imagine. We have a ton of Pokemon with grass moves, so he really wasn't too difficult. Barbarical was an easy Oko with Giga Drain from Poltegeist, and I had admit, I got a little cocky here. I really wanted to see if Applin could sweep again like with Nessa's gym, but alas, it got taken down due to Shuckle doing too much damage with Struggle Bug, which is a sentence I never thought that I'd actually be saying. After Shuckle went down, we decided to burn Stone Journer with Poltegeist and continuously lower its attack with Strength Sap. This strategy isn't the smartest one I've used in this run, because it's all thanks to our weak armor ability. It lowers our defense by one stage, but doubles our speed whenever we're hit by a physical move. So while we are weakening the enemy, depending on the Pokemon, the differences in damage isn't drastic. We were able to take down Stone Journer, and Colossal was actually pretty manageable, thanks to paralyzing it with Ribambi. And then we took it down with Leech Seed, Draining Kiss, and Protect Strats with Comfey. Like B, you can imagine that Piers gave us no issues. Scrafty, Malamar, Obscoon, and Skuntank went down pretty easily, but good god, <laughs> we are getting dangerously close to these level caps. So in order to ensure that Mimikyu didn't get any closer than it already was, I let Skuntank purposefully take it down. Raihan was pretty easy, mainly because, again, we have a ton of fairy types at our disposal. I decided to have Kumfei, Leech Seed, Gigalith, and Flygon to get a ton of recovery each turn, while also setting up a Reflect with Klefki, since I know Flygon is most likely going to go for Steel Wing as much as it can. As Flygon goes down, he sends out Sandaconda, and I never prioritize this thing, so he paralyzes a bunch of my Pokemon. So after paralyzing Kumfei, we weren't able to Leech Seed Duraludon. After Klefki gets paralyzed, we set up a Reflect again, and Miss Will-O-Wisp with Poltegeist, so after Poltegeist faints, we send in Mimikyu. Leech Seed takes out the Sandaconda, and we charm Duraludon enough 
to practically take no damage from Iron Head, even though he flinched Mimikyu multiple times in a row. Upon arriving in Winden, we took down Marnie pretty easily because, again, we have too many fairy types. <laughs> Hop's battle took a lot longer than expected, so check this out. He starts off with Dubwool, and we take it out with a Pultigeist, thanks to a few Giga Drains, Strength Sap, and burns. Unfortunately, by the time Dubwool goes down, we're at minus two defense already. He sends out his Snorlax next, and I wanted to try and take it down with Pultigeist, so we burn it and continuously weaken it with Strength Sap, but Hop uses a full restore to heal him back to full and relieve Snorlax of his burn, so I decided to just cut my losses and let it take down Pultigeist with a crit heavy slam. That whole thing took like five minutes. It felt like it was taking ages. I send in Kumfei next to take it out, and he sends out Pinkurchin. Predicting a poison jab, I go into Klefki, but he just starts cursing at me. Like, come on, man, keep the profanity somewhere else. Do you kiss your mother with that mouth? I then switched into Rabambi to take it down with the Choice Specs Pollen Puff. He sends out Corviknight next, and we send in Klefki to set up a Reflect, but then immediately swap into Meltan in order to take it out with a few Thunderbolts. Out last is his Inteleon, and we send Klefki back in in order to set up a Light Screen. Once we get taken down, down to a critical max quake, we send in Kumfei to leech seed it. After a while, Inteleon goes down and we can move on to Oleana. Oleana really wasn't too difficult, but we also don't have many answers to her gigantic max Garboder, other than Natsu, who is painfully underleveled. Frostlass and Milotic were taken down to a Shadow Ball and a few Giga Drains from Pultigeist. Salazzle unfortunately takes us down with a Venoshock, but I could definitely have taken it down with another Shadow Ball, I was just trying to stall. Mimikyu came in and took it down with a Shadow Sneak though. Serena's out next, and we get two Home Clauses up before it hits us with a track, so we're incredibly lucky to hit two play roughs when we did. Garboder's out last, and its max moves do a truckload to us, so I let Mimikyu go down after hitting relatively hard with a Shadow Claw. Natu stalled out her remaining Dynamax turns, and we sent in Rabambi, who dodged two gunk shots and took it out with two Choice Specs Pollen Puffs. The finals were incredibly easy. BD shows up to try and give us his character development. So we do some damage to his Mawile with Meltan and eventually take it out with a Shadow Ball from Pultigeist. After activating our weak armor, we can outspeed everything on his team and do massive damage with Shadow Ball. So Gardevoir and Rapidash go down easily and we can do some really good damage to Hatterene but unfortunately we get taken down. Rabambi comes in to do some solid damage with Pollen Puff, but unfortunately we get taken down to a Max Flare, and then Klefki comes in to take it out with a Flash Cannon. Nessa was pretty easy too. She starts off with Galisopod, so I let off with Meltan to paralyze it. We do some good damage with Thunderbolt, but Poltegeist literally just came out and swept the rest of her team. After sending out Galisopod due to its emergency exit, she sends out Barrascuta, and we take it out with a Giga Drain after taking a Throat Chop, hereby activating our weak armor. Galisopod comes back out, but we activate its emergency exit again, since she healed before, and then we take out Sea King. Galisopod comes back out yet again, and we take it out this time while also taking out Pelipper. We did some massive damage to Gigantamax Dreadnought, but sadly we didn't take it out in one hit, so Klefki came in and took it out with a Dazzling Gleam. Now I know what you're thinking. The E was really easy because I have a bunch of fairy types, blah, blah, blah. Well, you're wrong. We swept her with Natu. Since her Halucha only has Flying Press, High Jump Kick, and Bounce, we can easily set up six Cosmic Powers, boosting both of our defense stats and drastically increasing the power of Stored Power. With this, Halucha, Surfetched, Phalanx, Grapplock, and Gigantamax Machamp went down easily. Raihan was pretty easy too. We started off by Leech Seeding as Torkoal, yet we had to switch out a ton of times to try and get rid of the Yawns that it kept on hitting on us. I switched into Klefki to do so, but of course, the one turn that I do that, he goes for a Lava Plume when he's typically been going for Solar Beam. After it goes down to Leech Seed, he sends out Turtonator, but since he is so fixated on going for Shell Trap, so we can go into Kumfei, Leech Seed again, and use Draining Kiss, which doesn't actually activate Shell Trap, interestingly. After Turtonator goes down, he sends out Gudra, so we switched into Mimikyu and set up with Home Claws. At plus two attack and plus one accuracy, due to getting hit by a Muddy Water, Gudra and Flygon go down to a single Play Rough each. Duraludon's out next, and we do some good damage with Play Rough, but we get taken down to a Max Steel Spike. We sent Rabambi in to do some damage with Dazzling Gleam, but we got taken down to a Rock Fall, and then we send in Kumfei to take it down with a Draining Kiss. After fighting Raihan, I caught myself a Diglett, because I'm stupid and forgot that we could use that, so I ran over to Route 4, outside of Turfield, to catch one, and we do a bunch of raids to get ourselves some candies and level it up quickly so that we can hopefully have some kind of answer for Rose and Leon. Diglett is very commonly known for its speed and decent attack, but its other stats are just absolutely pitiful, so we'll need to use a Focus Sash on this thing if we want it to even do something right. Rose was really difficult, as you can imagine, seeing as, okay, you, you get the joke already. You can imagine that he took a few attempts. On our first 
attempt, we let off with Klefki to set up Reflect and see how much damage we could do with Foul Play, but I was so focused on the steel moves that he had that I didn't realize that Escavalier had Drill Run. We basically had to stall through his whole team with Burn and Leech Seed, but it just was not in the cards for us. We got to Kaparaja on our first attempt, but there was just no way that we could possibly survive. I decided to try something a little different, however. This whole time I've been trying to use Poltegeist as a stall Pokemon, and I still did, but I had it relearn Nasty Plot, since whenever Weak Armor activates and we go for Nasty Plot, it's essentially like getting a Shell Smash boost, which we don't get till level 60. But the problem is, Poltegeist is really our only way of winning this battle. So if it goes down at the beginning of the fight, we're done for we need to restart. On our successful attempt, we swept through a Scavalier, Perserker, Kling Clang, and Ferrothorn with Shadow Ball. We did some serious damage to Kaparaja, but in the end we had Diglett take it out. So before fighting Leon, my initial plan was to just throw a Focus Sash on Poltegeist to allow me to survive any one hit as long as I'm at full HP, and then set up a nasty plot to sweep through Leon's entire team. However, he starts off with an Aegislash who is purely offensive on the special side, so we wouldn't get that weak armor boost. So instead, I grinded up Poltegeist to level 60 to get Shell Smash, which lowers our defenses by one stage to double our offenses and speed. On our first attempt, we actually were able to set up two shell smashes, since his H slash opened up with King's Shield, and on the second turn, brought us to our Focus Sash. So we were able to steamroll through his entire team until Charizard came out. And then we lost. He took down Poltegeist with a max Airstream, and that raised his speed enough to outspeed and destroy everything on my team with a Fire Blast. If he hadn't healed on his last Dynamax turn, we definitely would have won that. So I went and got ourselves a second Focus Sash to give it to Diglett, so that it can live a hit and hopefully take down Charizard. On our second attempt, Leon did the exact same thing, starting off with King's Shield, allowing us to set up to plus four special attack and speed. With our boosts in tow, we were able to outspeed and decimate Aegislash, Dragapult, Haxorus, Cinderace, and Seismitoad. We did a massive dent in Charizard's HP and got taken down by a G-Max Wildfire. So we sent out Diglett to survive a hit and take down Charizard with a Rock Slide, winning us the run. That run was actually a ton of fun, but it was practically a fairy only challenge. I, I I will give you that. But I definitely set myself up for failure pretty much when I accidentally got myself the experience charm, making abiding by that level cap rule just that much more difficult. But I had a really fun time being able to use Pokemon I've always wanted to use, like Ribombi, Comfey, and Mimikyu. I'd strongly recommend this run if you're looking for a really interesting challenge to do in Sword and Shield. And if you guys like that video, be sure to check out the other challenge runs I've done and follow me on Twitch and TikTok where I do these challenges challenge runs live.